Latin nouns are divided into five distinct groups called declensions based on how these nouns end and how these nouns change because of their grammar. We group nouns into these declensions based on the ending of the genitive case. This video covers neuter nouns of the third declension. Yes, these nouns are different from the regular nouns of the third declension, which can be either masculine or feminine. We will be discussing words here like tempus and mare. So you maybe already know that third declension nouns must end in an is, is, in their genitive case. For third declension neuters, this is still the case. You know, the third declension is still the third declension, and by definition, all third declension nouns must end in an is in the genitive singular. Therefore, third declension neuters must still end in an is in the genitive singular. It's some of the other endings that are slightly different. So before we get to the endings and declension, keep in mind the two specific rules about neuter nouns. Not just neuters in the third declension, but all neuters in all declensions. So rule number one, the nominative and accusative are always identical. So for a third declension noun like tempus, since our nominative singular is tempus, the accusative singular is also tempus. Rule number two, the nominative and accusative plural is always an A. So for our third declension word tempus, the nominative and accusative plural is tempora. Notice that rule number two doesn't violate rule number one, and our plural nominative and accusative are still identical. Now, with those two rules applied, we can fill in the rest of our third declension endings. For words like tempus, the regular third declension endings apply. So is for the genitive, e for the dative, and e for the ablative. Then the plural of these are um in the genitive, the in ibus in the dative and ablative. Remember, by the way, this is a third declension word, so the nominative is going to be a blank. We get the stem of the noun from the genitive case. So tempor is what we put the endings onto. You're probably used to the third declension nominative singular looking different, but because of our first rule of neuters, the accusative singular looks different too. Now that we have the full declension, it helps to add translations. So the time, or a time, since Latin doesn't differentiate between the time, a time, or even just time. Of the time, to for the time, the time as the object of a verb, and by, with, from, and on the time. The plurals go likewise. There's another class of neuters in the third declension, the dreaded I stem neuters. Words like mare or animal. How can you figure out if a word is one of these scary, frightening I stems? Well, if it's neuter, it must have a nominative ending in an e, like mare, or al, like animal, or an ar, like calcar, which is Latin for spur, by the way. So these I stems and their third declension neuter endings are just like their name. Most of the endings will have an I. So let's decline these and I'll show you their endings. The nominative and accusative singular repeat, so whatever the nominative is, the accusative is. Now the genitive, which still ends in an is. We take the stem from the genitive singular. The dative singular is still a long e, but so is the ablative now. And it's a good thing, though, since the ablative of mare is now mari. If it weren't an i stem, the ablative singular would be an e, and it would look the same as the nominative singular. In the plural, we are going to add an i before all endings that don't currently have them. So the nominative plural ends in an ia, the genitive in ium, the dative in ibus, accusative in ia, and the ablative also in ibus. So, like all neuters, you might have some problems identifying whether the noun is the subject or the object. In the sentence mare widemus, the mare looks so tempting as a nominative, but here it's the accusative, since widemus is first person plural. We saw the sea. Of course, mare est pulcrum is also correct, since here mare is nominative. Confusing, sure, and I see it all the time, mixing up the nominative and accusative for neuter nouns. But keep it in the back of your head. You might need to remember this the next time a sentence stumps you. Why is this word nominative? It doesn't make sense as a subject. And then you remember, aha, this could be accusative.